Hey, Daniel Bach here from JumpScience.com. This is Speed Science 6. In this video, I'm talking about speed being a product of stride rate and stride length. Okay, so it's a simple equation. Your rate times your length equals your speed. Now that's true because your rate is strides per second. If we multiply that by meters per stride, your length, you get meters per second, right? That's your speed. Okay, it's a simple equation. So, given that speed equals rate times length, uh, some people will try to run in a way that maximizes one or the other. They'll try to run with really quick strides to maximize stride rate, or really long strides to maximize stride length. Now, I'm just going to be honest, come right out and say it, neither one of those strategies works well for finding your top speed. Now, why is that? Uh, to answer that question, we have to look at physics. So, what determines stride rate and stride length? First, recall that although top speed sprinting is horizontal motion, it can be thought of as tiny little vertical jumps done with a lot of horizontal velocity. Okay? So, in order to get uh, tiny vertical jumps, we need vertical impulse. Okay, so let's review what impulse is. We have a force versus time graph. So let's say we're looking at uh, the vertical force coming up from the ground during one contact in a sprint. Okay, so that's this line here. Now, impulse is force times time. So impulse is the area underneath the curve. Okay, so the size of your impulse is going to determine the size of your vertical jump in your sprint. Now, your stride length is determined by your time in the air multiplied by your velocity in the air. Okay, so how would you increase stride length? Well, you would try to get more time in the air, right? Now, that would require a bigger vertical jump. Big, bigger vertical jump is going to require a bigger vertical impulse. Okay, now let's say this is me already sprinting as fast as I can. Uh, if I want a bigger vertical impulse, Assuming this is already full effort, uh, a bigger vertical impulse then is going to require more time, right? So I'm going to have to spend longer time on the ground in order to get that bigger vertical impulse. Now, if I spend longer time on the ground, uh, I'm going to lose stride rate. Now, stride rate is uh, determined by your time on the ground plus your time in the air. So how would you increase stride rate? Well, you would go less time on the ground. Now that's going to give you a smaller vertical impulse, right? Uh, and then that's also, because you have a smaller vertical impulse, that's a smaller vertical jump, that's going to mean less air time. So you can get uh, less time on the ground plus less air time. So that sounds really good, except less air time means a shorter stride length, right? Unless you're moving at a much faster velocity, then you could get the same stride length uh, with the less air time. So if you consider that, it seems like you could just keep getting a smaller and smaller impulse, a smaller and smaller vertical jump, and keep making your stride rate faster and faster and faster, uh, and getting off the ground more quickly should allow you to move over the ground more quickly, right? Well, no, the problem is, we need a certain amount of time in the air to generate our backwards foot velocity. Okay, so you can't just keep getting quicker and quicker off the ground. There's a reason that we don't sprint like that. Okay, so you can only get so small with that vertical jump. You can only get so quick off the ground. So the point to that whole impulse discussion is that there is a give and take between stride rate and stride length. You can't just increase one without decreasing the other. Okay, so if we were going to make a graph of rate, length, and speed, we'd have something like this. Okay, we have speed on the vertical axis, on the horizontal axis. Increasing in this direction, we have rate, but increasing in this direction, we have length. Okay, so as you gain one, you lose the other. Now your top speed is going to occur up here, and that's when you find the correct balance between rate and length. All right, but if you run with too quick of strides over here, you're going to run slower than you're capable. If you run with too long of strides over here, you're going to run slower than capable. So you can't just say, I want to run with the same stride rate as Tyson Gay. 
Okay, if you do that, you're gonna run slow. And if you're 6'5", you can't just say, I'm gonna run with the same stride length as Usain Bolt. I wanna run my 141 strides. Okay, if you do that, you're gonna be bounding down the track and you're gonna be slow. So you need to find this correct balance between rate and length. Okay? Now I don't want to make any blanket statements about how everybody should find that balance, but I'm just going to say that uh, the main way is by focusing on the task. Okay? Go out and sprint as fast as you can. If you have sprinting experience, that's going to put you in the right spot. Now if you are going to push yourself in a direction, I would say push yourself towards the quick side because you want to train yourself to get off the ground quickly. In the long run, that's what's going to allow you to move over the ground quickly. Okay? But you want to do that without sacrificing your skill component of producing that backwards foot velocity. So a couple of examples of people making mistakes in this area. Um, when people are really thinking about form, particularly trying to have a really high knee, they're going to uh, error over to this side with a lower stride rate and a bigger stride length. And they're going to be keeping themselves slow by trying to overdo form. Okay? Uh, it's over striding. It's also a good way to pull your hamstring. Okay, now on the other side of things would be uh, soccer players, right? Soccer players keep their feet low to the ground because they have to be near the ball and that tends to make them run with really quick short strides and so they're making a mistake over here and again they're running slower than they could be. Uh, it's a little bit too quick and not long enough. So once you find the correct balance between stride rate and length, uh, the way to get faster from there is simply improving your force production. Okay, so let's revisit the impulse. Uh, let's say this is my impulse uh, before, sprinting as fast as possible, and I improve my force production. Now I get faster force production here, then I can get the same impulse in less time on the ground, okay? So I get the same vertical jump, but I can get off the ground quicker. So now I have the same air time. Uh, but because I'm able to get off the ground quicker, I can move at a faster velocity. That means I increase my stride length. Okay? Then I have the same air time, but because I'm getting off the ground quicker, less ground time, I also increase my stride rate. Okay, so if you improve your force production, you naturally improve your stride rate and your stride length. And that's how you get faster. So the overarching theme to these speed science videos is that improving your force production is how you get faster. Okay? So the question remains then, well how do you improve your force production for sprinting? That's what I'm going to talk about in Speed Science 7. Stay tuned.